The Valley of the Kings, Egypt, November 4th, 1922. A young boy working for a British excavation team led by archaeologist Howard Carter is riding his donkey home one night when suddenly the animal's hoof slips into a hole below the sand. Carter and his team later excavate the site and discover a mysterious chamber hidden deep beneath the shifting sands. Peering inside, they lay their eyes upon one of the most incredible archaeological finds in history. A massive treasure trove of gold and ebony artifacts, all laid out before another chamber guarded by two imposing statues and sealed shut with an intricate combination of rope knots and clay. The long lost tomb of King Tutankhamun. It was absolutely a magnificent discovery, it made headline news all over the world, and really sort of captured public imagination at, at just the right time. Unlike most of the other tombs that had been discovered of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, King Tut's tomb was untouched. It had not been plundered, it had not been destroyed. And so there's a tremendous wealth of archeological data, as well as just a stunning display of artifacts. After spending nearly three months cataloging the more than 5,000 relics found within the tomb's antechamber, on February 16, 1923, yet just after two o'clock in the afternoon, members of the press gathered to watch Howard Carter finally break the seal protecting King Tut's burial chamber, which had lain undisturbed for more than 3,000 years. Carter started excavation of the burial chamber within Tutankhamun's tomb. And he found the intact burial of Tutankhamun, which was contained essentially within nine protective layers. The sarcophagus is very elaborate. It's got gold. It's inlaid with precious stones. And there's several layers of it before you get down to the central layer, which is, of course, the mummy of King Tutankhamun himself. Once Carter began unwrapping the mummy of Tutankhamun and removed the funerary death mask and made his way through the different mummy bandages and the bundle itself, he was able to see the face of Tutankhamun, which hadn't been seen by any living person for nearly 3,500 years. So in a way, the opening of the tomb of Tutankhamun is a kind of a resurrection because you see, if somebody in Egyptian belief is forgotten, if the name of him is not mentioned, people don't know about him, he's dead. In Egyptian terms, people after the death, they only keep living as long as they are remembered. The discovery of King Tut's mummy launched an international media frenzy, making headlines in every major newspaper around the world. But Howard Carter and his team had barely begun enjoying their success when several strange things started happening to them. And that evening, Howard Carter is having his dinner, and here is a commotion in the next room. Goes in, and his pet canary is being attacked inside its cage by a king cobra. Now, the king cobra is a symbol for the pharaoh. And a canary, the symbolism. The canary is the first to go. The canary is the weakest and a warning. After that, Lord Carnivon, the financier of the whole expedition, was there on site. And then, while they're inventorying the treasures, he gets a mosquito bite. A few days later, accidentally nicks the bump with his razor. The bump gets infected. It leads to blood poisoning, and he dies of it. A prominent British radiologist came out to the site to x-ray King Tut, and shortly after handling the mummy, he catches a mysterious disease that cannot be diagnosed, cannot be treated, and it kills him. All told, the deaths of no fewer than seven members of Howard Carter's expedition took place shortly after the reopening of Tutankhamun's burial chamber. While it was certainly possible their untimely deaths were nothing more than coincidences, Many believed that by disturbing King Tut's mummy, the archaeologists had somehow triggered a deadly curse. To the ancient Egyptians, 
death was not the end. But in order to guarantee yourself eternal life, you actually had to preserve your earthly body for the spirit to be able to function properly. The idea of a mummy curse is to keep those people out of the tombs. The Egyptians said, if you bothered these mummies, you would have a problem. And people who have discovered those tombs actually ended up dying weird ways. If that's not a curse, what would be?